Can you love your enemies and forgive them? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. In his autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth, Mahatma Gandhi mentions the Sermon on the Mount as one of the main religious works that inspired him to search for ways of bringing about political freedom for India by non-violent resistance to oppression. He writes, I came to see that the Sermon on the Mount was the whole of Christianity for one who wanted to live a Christian life. It is that sermon that has endeared Jesus to me. In 1947, when British India was divided into Hindu India and Muslim Pakistan, Mahatma Gandhi went on a hunger strike to end the communal violence which had erupted between Hindu and Muslim fanatics in the Indo-Pakistani border states. During this time, a Hindu fanatic came to him and confessed, I will surely go to hell and no one can save me. Gandhi asked the man why he thought he was doomed to hell. The man replied that he was a Hindu and that Muslims had killed his child during a riot. In revenge, he had slaughtered a Muslim child and his parents, but felt very guilty afterwards. Gandhi said, I know one way to save you from going to hell. Find a Muslim child who has lost his parents Take him home, bring him up and educate him so that he grows up as a Muslim in your Hindu family. Then you won't go to hell. When Mohandas Gandhi was gunned down in 1948, his last gesture was to press his palms together and raise his folded hands to his lips in the Hindu sign of forgiveness. Martin Luther King was a great admirer of Gandhi. When a gang of racial fanatics set fire to King's house, an Afro-American mob gathered ready to take revenge, but he told them, When you live by the rule of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, you end up with a nation of blind and toothless people. Then he led the gathering in prayer for the white brothers who had burned his house. Today's readings from the first to the gospel itself provide us with a reflection on the extraordinary grace that we need to love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, to bless those who curse us, to give our other cheek when we are slapped, to give the rest of our clothes from someone who steals our tunic. For it is quite impossible and simply not human to not respond in a retaliatory fashion when we have been aggrieved. Because for many of us, we have to take revenge when abusive language is hurled at us, much more if an injustice is committed against us. But what Jesus teaches us today is really not an idealistic or impossible response to hurts inflicted upon us. It is by all counts the most human, apart from being the most Christian response. It is practical, human and Christian, to love without expecting anything in return. It is for our own good. For when we have created enemies, when we harbor the hurts deeply, two things happen. First, our prayers become shallow to non-existent. We do not feel the presence of God in us. We are drawn to not pray because deep in our hearts we know that God is far from us when we distance ourselves from his teaching on mercy, forgiveness, and love. So we feel inadequate, incapable, unworthy to face him. Second, there is no peace in us. We are filled with so much hatred that in our waking hours and perhaps in our dreams, nay nightmares, the face of the person we hate bothers us to the point that our health suffers, our decision-making is affected, our attitude becomes distorted. For indeed, how can the Spirit of Christ be in us when the spirit of hatred consumes us? But when we pray for the well-being of the one who has hurt us, when we pray for our heart to understand that person more, when we pray that we may forgive that person who has violated us, the Holy Spirit washes away the bitterness and resentment and purifies our heart to accept, welcome, forgive, and love that supposed enemy of ours. Our attitude for the evil done is not expunged when we have forgiven. We still denounce the physical and sexual abuse, the exploitation and manipulation done on us, but our focus now turns to the healing and conversion of the perpetrator. Can you forgive the rapist, the scammer, the swindler, the murderer? The Gospel says you should for your own good, for the good of your soul. But the Gospel implies, too, that forgiveness must lead to reconciliation with the person who has hurt us. The amazing grace of God has led David to drop his revenge on Saul, who was pursuing him, was bent on killing him. 
David's desire for vengeance and his safety was overcome by the grace to love and forgive. He was one not normally to forgive his enemies, but God's grace made him do so. And Saul was grateful and was reconciled with him. How many times have we seen grace winning over sin? Pope St. John Paul II, recovering from his gunshot wounds, visited his assailant in jail and assured him of his forgiveness. Father Lawrence Jenko, upon his release as a hostage in Beirut, said that only when he was able to forgive his kidnappers was he able to enjoy his freedom. Only by forgiving those who had starved, degraded, and brutalized him was he able to move from brokenness to wholeness before God. During the race riots in Los Angeles in the aftermath of the Rodney King debacle, a truck driver named Reginald Denny was pulled from his vehicle and severely beaten with a brick. When the case went to trial in 1993, Denny stunned the courtroom with his offer of forgiveness to those who had almost killed him. Later, Denny said that only by forgiving the perpetrators of the crime against him was he able to put the event behind him and move on. Brothers and sisters, we can act and react out of sin, or we can accept God's grace and respond with mercy and compassion. For as Paul says in Romans 5.20, Where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. We just have to ask for it. We choose today to be at peace with ourselves and with God by receiving His grace to love. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, fill my heart with your amazing grace so that I may learn to love and forgive and be at peace. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.